Pierce Bronson is back as James Bond for his third film, but how does it stand compared to his previous two films? Let's find out in the review. Welcome back to my channel, this is Let's Be Real Brad. I talk about movies and TV shows and do all sorts of fun and exciting videos here on the channel. If this is your first time here, you should hit that subscribe button and drop a like on the video as it would be gladly appreciated. We are back with our James Bond weekly reviews with the 17th official Bond film with The World Is Not Enough. The film is now being directed by Michael Apt, starring Pierce Bronson, Sophie Marquieu, Robert Kyle, and Denise Richards. I think this film is better than Tomorrow Never Dies, but not by a small margin. Margin. After seeing how awesome Goldeneye was by putting Bond in the new era, feeling updated to the current times, the film holds up so well 25 years later. This one went back to the old ways and, and it left me very underwhelmed and bored throughout this movie. This movie does have its fair share of positives starting with the acting. The acting from everyone, not you. It's pretty good in this movie. Pierce Bronson goes all out in this role being a hard-nosed, very serious spy, which I welcomed. I think this performance is as good as it was in Goldeneye. Desmond Llewellyn had his final performance as the beloved Q being in his 17th film out of the 19th official films up to this point. Unfortunately, he passed away three months after the premiere in a car accident. He is a character I love to see in every new Bond film, adding his sweet, sarcastic charm to this love and hate relationship with Bond. Sophie Marquieu is great in this one, as I think she gives a strong performance with a strong character. We will highlight one performance later in this video that needs to be discussed, so you don't want to miss that. The writing is okay for this film, as it does have a great twist halfway through the film, which would fit the movie perfectly. Everything the writers did with the rest of it was surprisingly really great. I really love how this film opens up with a very long pre-title sequence that gets you hooked instantly into the movie. It feels like real consequences are happening all at once, which made me so excited to see how the rest of this movie would turn out. I also enjoyed the dark atmosphere that had some exciting concepts thrown in. Bond has one of the darkest kills in the series up to this point that definitely shocked me in the best way possible. The visual effects are still top notch with having the most significant budget up to this point in the series with $209.7 million adjusted for inflation. It shows the generous use of practical effects, solid production design, a wide variety of exotic locations, and decent action scenes. All of it looks so convincingly real, which makes the film feel so alive and real. David Arnold's score is again, another great one still trying to remix the classical Bond music and make it his own which makes for entertaining action scenes that always kept me on the edge of my seat listening to that fantastic Bond theme. The title song The World Is Not Enough performed by Garbage is pretty good. I know many fans have rated this as one of their best Bond title songs but Maybe it hasn't grown on me yet. I think the lyrics are great, along with trying to mix up the Bond's franchise's classical music. It does fit perfectly as a Bond title song, but I'm not sure why it doesn't wholly connect with me. Director Michael Apt directed this movie well, doing his first big budget action movie that really impressed me on how we can capture all the significant action scenes making them look so real. He didn't do anything outstanding, but a very competent job, so I give him a lot of credit there. This movie does have a boatload of negatives, starting with how bland and boring this movie can be. This movie had so much potential to be great, but it fell into the previous film's trap with being such an average movie by the end because they didn't want to push the franchise to new heights and made the characters more interesting. Sure, many moments were pretty good, but other than that, I felt very underwhelmed. The action scenes are decent, but along with some memorable action scenes like the boat chase at the beginning or some gunfight battles, they were just meh to say the least. I think the team knew they were catering to teenagers to hone back on the violence and blood, which was very disappointing for this film. The third act action scene was quite bad, feeling very clunky and forgettable. The production design is just awful. It was very distracting as it looked like they had actors move all around the set and then edit quickly to go to the next scene. For how claustrophobic it was, they didn't land the tension or suspense all that well. I was utterly bored and practically done with this movie. Now, 
we are getting into the most significant criticism yet with the worst James Bond girl of all time, Dr. Christmas Jones, played by Denise Richards. This performance is literally god freaking awful. She is in a good chunk of this movie, so every word she spoke sounded like she was in a completely different film. She never looked like she was ever scared, frightened, or just in a Bond film in general. Richards won herself a Razzie for worst actress being the only Bond girl to do so. She is terribly written because she's supposed to be a scientist but made her look like a Lara Croft wannabe being a professional model mixing in the stupid underdeveloped classic Bond girl and it makes no sense. By the way her character's name is Christmas Jones which is only in the film to be used as a joke for the last line of the entire movie. Take a look. What's wrong about you? Yeah, how so? I thought Christmas only comes once a year. What the fuck? Overall, this is an another disappointing Bond film that is better than the previous movie for some of its darker moments that stand out as entertaining action, but it falls flat on his face with it being so average, a terrible third act, boring story, and the worst Bond girl of all time. This isn't a bad film by any means, it's strictly down the middle, and that's why it's so disappointing. I'm giving The World Is Not Enough a 5 out of 10. So, have you seen The World Is Not Enough? And if you have, where does it rank in your James Bond film rankings? Next week, we will be reviewing the last Pierce Bronson James Bond film with 2002's Die Another Day. So, be sure to check out this film before next week's review. As always, I will see you all in the next video.